I, my big thing is portfolios could be a way that we can really yeah. show what's the amazing things that are happening in school, but really develop kids um, and, and highlight them, but also help them find their strengths, what they really love through that process. So I don't know. I know that's, I, that wasn't one of the questions. What, like, what do you think of that? Cause that it's, that's what it's like, don't say, get rid of this, but don't offer an op a solution. Yeah. Show me, show me an opportunity. And I being a bit a huge advocate of portfolio specifically, what, what do you think of that? So, I mean, I pretty much, that's what I've been advocating, I would say for a very long time now, like, even though I was teaching AP classes when I was in the classroom, I was even petitioning the college board to not have my students have to take their AP English exam, because to me, that exam, as somebody who has a degree in English, that exam does not mirror whatsoever any English class that I took in college. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, you know what, but if you let my students submit their portfolio of work for you, they'll pay the fee, you'll use whoever, whatever readers you have hmm. to determine whether or not they've met the criteria for a college level course. I just felt that it gave my students, uh, you know, their, their research paper in particular, and then the other work that they did in the class, just, I don't know, it, it showed their body of learning in a way that a single exam just can't. So I mean, so you're getting, off, that's what yeah. you're getting. That's what you're getting. One of those for doing that because that is like I actually from this. I think a lot of times when we, especially, and it's going to make some people mad. When especially <laughs> when we specifically teach English, we almost teach some of our kids to write to um, to write in a way that prepares them to write in college, but not necessarily to write in a way we'd want to read. If that makes sense. Do you sure. know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, so I, I, I love all the people listen to this. I, I'm not a big dissertation reader. Yeah, no. But I like blogs, you know, do you know what I mean? And so like, are we giving like a lot of more kids coming out of school and they know, they know how to write because they're English teachers, but they don't necessarily write in a way that they write after school if they don't go to college. Is that fair to say? Am I? It is. And I think that they're, I mean, as a writing teacher, yeah. thinking about, my role um, in developing skills for kids, I don't think I ever told my students they had to take my suggestions. I think I went into their, I went into their work reading like a reader, Love giving it. them feedback as a reader, like, hey, you might consider this, it's a little confusing here. And if you, you are the author, you make your choices about what it stays, but just mm -hmm. be able to back up why you're keeping it the way that you are. If you're willfully breaking a lot of rules with the way you're writing tell me why you're doing it and that's i mean authors break rules all the time but i mean it has to be intentional you need right. to know what you're doing and why you're doing it and what effect you're looking to get with it and i think because i'm a writer myself mm -hmm. i never wanted like i don't have the right to tell a kid what the right. best writing looks like what who am i <laughs> i don't i still kind of struggle with that a little bit like you know even as a teacher just because i teach english just because i'm a writing coach doesn't mean i know everything and it doesn't mean my style of writing is for everybody but what you just suggested is true too i think the reason why my books do as well as they do is because they're practical mm -hmm. i'm not writing a research dissertation i'm writing ways that teachers teachers will pick up the book They'll read something. They'll be able to implement it immediately. Yeah, to me, that's for people. And it, it, it had. I know this sounds weird. It has to be like I wrote Innovators Mindset specifically trying to write a book that I hadn't read in education. Not necessarily the ideas, but the the way I wrote it. More sure. conversational. More kind of like joking around stuff like that. Because you can have the best ideas in your book, but if I can't make it past the first five pages because I'm bored, then mm. I'll never get the ideas. And I think you know. And I'm not. I don't think that anyone that's listening to this is like, well, I really like the super academic. Great. That's awesome. And there's a lot of those opportunities, but I didn't think there was many in the other side. So I thought, Hey, there's probably an audience that's being missed out here. <laughs>